Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to talk about the use state hook and how we can write it from scratch in JavaScript. So my video is based on a talk given by Swix at Asia Conf 2019. I'll leave a link to his talk in the video description. I do recommend checking that video out. So now let's talk about how to write the use state hook with JavaScript. So you first need to understand that a use state hook is nothing but a function with state. So whenever you call a use state hook in react, it returns you two things, the state and a function to mutate that state. So at the very least, a use state hook is basically a function with state that persists across multiple reruns of the function. So now I'm going to start with a pretty naive solution and I'm going to build up on that. So now let's start with the function. We'll call the function add, which takes in a new num and we'll also define a num and then what we'll do is we'll mutate the outside num with new num right and then we're gonna call this method a couple of times and we're gonna console dot log the value of num right and let's see what happens so this is the output that we get on the console the initial value of num is one you add two to it and it runs three pretty standard stuff right now if i try to again add two and again i console.log the value the value is five right so now it's three and then it is five that means across multiple runs of add the value of num is persisted right and that's what basically statefulness for a function is now the problem with this implementation is anyone can change the value of num here right so i can just say num5 and then if i try to add 2 again and console lock the value again the value changes right so while i was editing this video i found out this error that i made here so assigning num to five doesn't basically change the output of the whole thing because by the end of line number eight, the value of num is already equal to five. The point that I was trying to make is that num being defined in the global namespace, any code can change the value of num. And that's the major drawback of this solution. Now let's get back into the video. So now how do you get around this problem, right? So the answer is pretty simple. You just use closures. So first, you bring this inside of the function. So now the num variable is private. And when you try to run this, now though we lose the statefulness of the function, you won't be able to change the value of num. To bring back the statefulness, what we'll do is we'll put this into a function, right? So now so now this is going to return a function add is going to return a function which is going to take a value called new num so we don't need this anymore and this will mutate the value of num and this will return me num right now let's change this now add doesn't return a value directly but add returns a new function so let's just call it let add num equals add so this is the value so this is the function that is now returned and then i can just paste it here I remove this now and now when i run this it it's back right we get the statefulness back and conceptually this is what the use states internal implementation would look like this isn't the exact implementation but we have pretty much recreated the use state hook with seven lines of code which is insane so now let's try to refactor this code to make it look more like react right so we'll first try to define a const react and we'll start with an ify right so if he is a immediately invoke function expression right and uh we'll delete this and what we'll do is we'll call a function called use state and as you know a use state takes in an initial value so let's just call it init val and let's just call let's create a variable called state and assign 
to it the init val and then let's define another function called set state let's just use the function syntax and this takes in a new val and the state is now new val right and the use state function according to the react api returns two values the state and the function to mutate that state right so we just return this and let's clean up here remove this this is basically our use state implementation right so now if i say let uh, num and set num equals use state uh, let's start with the init value of one and i say console dot log num and then if i say set set num to a value of say three and console dot log the value of num again it should work or should it oh, oh wait a second we have to return use state from the if we react or use state my bad yeah and this doesn't work as expected right so whenever i pass in set num 3 it should be one and three but instead it is just one one so the problem here is basically when i call use state one i return a num already right so calling set num on this will actually change the state but won't reflect the num here so now let's try to refactor the code a bit more to make it look more reacty right so in the react you have a function render so this takes in a component And what is this going to do is going to say const a is equal to it's going to call the component because it's a functional component it's going to call the component and it's going to call the render method on the component and it's going to return the component right so this is what our reacts render method does right now let's try to define a component so since it is a functional component i'll write wrapper which is my component and uh, let's try to define this right so there is a wrapper and now i use uh, let num and set num and now i use the react dot use state hook with value one and what this would return is two things it will return the render function which just basically just console.log because i don't have a dom here this is no js and this will just do render with value i will just say num here right and let's do let, and let's have another function called click and what this function basically does is just it calls set num with num plus one right so it increments the value of num by one right and now for this to work i now need to create a i need to pass in to react dot render this component right so i pass in wrapper and this returns me the rendered component so let's just call it let uh, rendered or yeah let's just call it rendered this will return me an instance of the rendered component and i'll say rendered r-e-n-t-e-r-e-t -E -E dot click to set the new value right so let's see what happens now this won't work because i haven't returned uh, render from here now this just says rendered with value one and the click for the click to be reactive you need to render the component again right because the state is dirty so you have to render the component again oh no 
just remove this real quick and yeah now as you can see the value doesn't change and the reason for this is because every time you say react.render it's going to call the use state hook and you pass in the initial value as one right so the state is always going to be initialized to the value of one now to fix this we need to lift the state up right we're gonna say let state this and inside we are going to say state is either state or the initial value that is being passed now what is happening is you're closing the use state hook over the value of state right and this one single thing will now help you to make this reactive right so now it rendered with value 2 and now if i click again and render the component again it's going to change to value 3 and this is the very basic implementation of a use state hook so now let's try to take this one step further right now what happens if we had two hooks right so let us say let color and i'm gonna say set color is equal to react dot use state with an initial value of black and we're gonna print that value of color when we render the component and we'll have a change method where we'll call the set color with a value that is passed to the to the change method right now if i try to call this here with pink and render the component again let's see what happens right here the the num value is also changed to pink right and this is because we are mutating the same value in the memory right the state value and for you to fix this we need to introduce state as an array rather than just one memory location right so now let's say state is a memory array and now we also need an index to iterate over that array right so let idx will start from zero and every time you call the use state hook you have to increment the index because the state for the next use state has to be set on the next index of the array right so that's why we got to increment idx here after uh, after this call here after this function is defined and the state would now be taken from here from the state array so let's just say underscore state and let's just define this as state and let's just say idx here so whenever you call the set state method it has to be set at the appropriate index in the in the state array right so just fix this and also one more thing whenever you render the component the idx value has to be set to zero because whenever you are rendering the component here you are using the use state hook and the num value is at the initial is going to be set at index number zero right so you have to reset the index every time you re-render the component when i try to run this the idx value oh it's not underscore idx it is idx let's try to run this now the reason why this is broken is because the value of index has changed right so if i try to console.log the value of index before i called before i call set num it is the value of index is 2 right but whenever i call set num it has to go in and change the value at the zeroth index because that's where my first value is and whenever i call set color it has to go and change the value at index 1 because that's where my color value is being stored right so to do this what we need to do is we need to freeze the value of index right and to do that we again use closures by just saying let underscore idx is equal to idx right and we change this to now underscore idx right now what is happening here is that the set state function is closing over the value of idx so whenever the use state function would run for the first time here the value of idx would be stored in this memory location in idx and that 
would be used by, by the set state function. This is the common pattern that we see here, right? So whenever you need to make the function stateful, just lift what you need to persist uh, into the closure of the function, right? Now, if I try to run this, this will run as expected, right? Now, if I try to change the color again here, if I change it to green and I render the component again, this works as expected. So this has been a very simple implementation of the use state hook from scratch. The, the talk that I mentioned earlier, I do recommend that you take a look. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more of this type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.